Hello and welcome. This is a special episode of the 1904 Club podcast from the Hall Daily Mail. And I apologise to everybody that's been messaging me over the last 24 hours saying, where the hell is it? Because I know we we do it on, we, don't, we tend to do it on a Monday. Uh, for obvious reasons, yesterday we couldn't do it because of the, the travelling to uh, Antalya. We were, we were well over, I think it was about an hour and a half late leaving Humberside and by the time we got to the hotel, I won't bore you, but we just didn't. We didn't have time, and um, and we needed to, to to investigate the buffet last night. That was the main priority. So um, here we are. We we, we are here. Uh, Burnsy is with me today. Um, Fletch is out in Barcelona enjoying um, some Catalan sunshine, and and Prutz, funnily enough, is is in Hull today. So unavailable, which is a shame. But I, I didn't think he was allowed in Hull, Burnsy. Just playing the tiny violins there for you, Baz. You know, the flight was delayed. Oh. And you had to go to the all in, five star all inclusive buffet last <laughs> night and everything like that, and had to go to Turkey. I mean, I've got a bit of a cold. My right, eyes man? might be watering anyway, but e- even worse now. Blimey, it's a tough life, son. It's it, it's one of those. Uh, so we're coming to you, as I say, from Regnum Kaya, which is the the hotel resort where. Hull City's players uh, are staying for the, the duration of the week. The, the squad uh, travelled over from from Humberside Airport yesterday. They were joined on the flight by a hundred support, well, fifty supporters, and their lucky plus ones who made the journey out. And the the fans this afternoon are a, a theme park that I can see from my balcony window, the Land Lands of Legends theme park. Uh, and for those fans that came out j- during the World Cup break, if if they went to it, they'll know it. But the uh, but yeah, some of the fans are off there this afternoon. Some of the players have gone off to play golf because there's a, a couple of look, a couple of really nice golf courses here, so they're off doing that. A tough life. Land of Legends uh, theme park. Does it have a Dean Winder statue? You know, I, I think it's Go got Mile, Dean Winder. I, I think there's an, an Ian Ashby Lounge, and I think there's a. a <laughs> I think the roller coaster <laughs> is named after Dean Windass, the, the Windy Ass. <laughs> I think it's called. Oh dear, very good. Very good. So, I've I've got a question for you. Did Liam Delap go? Is he on the trip? Uh, no, Liam Delap isn't here. Unfortunately, he the club were having a meeting with Manchester City's medical staff on Friday, and it was deemed that it would be better for for Liam to continue his rehab um, up back in Manchester with with City. Uh, but I I'll be speaking to Liam properly. I mean, obviously, I've seen him around the hotel and chatted to him at training earlier on quite a lot and um you know that'll be a topic of conversation we'll get to later in the week where Liam's at in his in his recovery um and is there any hope of him getting back you know we're now coming to the end of March aren't we and by the time City play again on Good Friday it will literally be the end of March um and there was a hope that he would be back in April so we'll get a bit of an update from from the the manager on on Delap I know the club are always Liam specifically is always really wary of putting timescales on players, particularly when you've got knee injuries. So he, he won't and he won't say, "Oh, he'll be back by a certain point." Uh, the the original prognosis back in in early January was that they hoped if he didn't need surgery that he would be back uh, by mid to late April. So we're still a few weeks away from that. But if he's gonna, you would think if he's gonna have any part to play in the remaining month, full month of the season. Then he's going to need to be back on the training pitch at, at Cottingham fairly soon um, to get himself ready for, for match action. Because obviously we know we know they train at such a high intensity that it can't he can't just roll off the out of the gym and, and expect expect to play an hour an hour and a half of Championship football. So, but we'll get an update on that later in the week, Burnsy. Okay, everybody else travelled full squad. Uh, apart from the internationals, so obviously uh, Mika Seri is away oh, yeah. with the Ivory Coast. What is good about that, actually, he's he's got two games next week, but both of those are in France. So normally, obviously, we saw it with, with the with the Africa Cup of Nations, a heck of a amount of travelling um, back out to Africa. But thankfully, that isn't the case. So he both of his, of his friendlies are in uh, just across the channel. So he will be back fairly quickly um, after that. Of course, Jaden Philogene and Tyler Morton are away with uh, England under twenty ones. Uh, they've got a couple of games as well, and. Um, Noah Ohio is away with the Dutch 21s and I spoke to Liam about Noah and he felt it was it was really good for him to go away and and play a couple of games which is a, in, in an ideal world you would have had Noah out here you know bonding with the squad he's obviously one of the seven new signings in January um he's had a mixed maybe that's a bit harsh mixed 
um, impact since, you know, in terms of he scored a goal, we've, we've seen a bit of him, but he's not been consistently playing, has he? So that's why I say mixed. But um, so it would have been good fault. to see him. Not his fault. No, no. Mixed, really, is, you know, he's, he's done what he can, really. But, you know, like, yeah, so no, no. Goal. yeah, exactly. So he's out with, he's away with Holland. Uh, uh, and obviously, as I say, Liam Delap is, is not here because of injury. So the absentees, Ivor uh, Pandor was, uh, wasn't on the flight out here, uh, but met us at the hotel. I, I didn't even, to be honest, I was sat chatting to Lee Darmber in one of the foyers and, and Eva Panda just arrived and introduced himself. He seems like a really nice guy. Uh, very impressed with what I've seen on the training pitch of him this morning. Um, and we, he is one of the players we will be speaking to throughout this week. Excellent. Good. So everything is happy camp. They're all out there and, you know, the weather's not great here, Baz. It's not raining, so it'll be it'll be good for them and good for the good for the fans as well to see them train. Do they get access to all the training sessions or just a couple? No, I think there's, there aren't that many sessions. To be quite honest with you, I think there are only like two full se actual sessions on the grass because obviously we're speaking today, Tuesday. We've, they've had their, their their lengthy session today. Uh, on the, on the grass they train Wednesday which is what the fans will be coming to see they play we've got the game um against C the Curacao national team on Thursday although that hasn't been officially broadcast yet uh they're still waiting for I think ratification um from the powers that be before they can officially announce it but that's on Thursday afternoon uh Friday is a usual day off um sorry Friday they're having Friday off I believe, uh, and then travelling back Saturday. So I think Liam was kind of keen to to strike a balance here because it's such a lovely place to be. You know, there's so many things. You know, within the hotel is huge. You know, there's, there's various cafes and bars. There's about twelve restaurants. There's a there's a couple of golf courses. It's right on the beach. You've got the so you've got you know access to the beach. There's got the there's a, a sports bar with you know some of the players were, were temping bowling last night. There's a lot for them to do, and I think. You know, you know, at this stage of the season, it's not like pre-season where the focus is solely on grafting, is solely on work, is work uh, at that stage of, of, of the year. You know, now it's about, I think, ticking over and it's as much about just kind of lifting spirits a bit and, and helping. You know, you've got Fabio's here, Anas is here, um, Billy Sharp's here, as I say, uh, Pandor's here. So, you know, bringing those those players that came in in January, um, Ryan Giles is another one who's here, of course, Um I think it's about bonding. So, you know, they're playing darts, which is really nice. They've they brought a couple of darts board, dart boards with them, uh, which so they're playing that. As I say, some of the players have gone out golfing this afternoon. Uh, some of the players are, are just going to be chilling around the, you know, having some, I was chatting to Ryan Orsop and he was going for a massage. Um, I think, I think Raleem is keen to try and make it as relaxed as possible, make it as enjoyable as possible, get the players, you know, bonding together and, and lifting their spirits and having some, just having some quality time. As I say, they've done, the bulk of their, their their fitness work was done in the summer. The bulk of their tactical work, you know, has been done, and they will they will hone that, of course, next week when they get back to Cottingham, away from people like me. Uh, but I think that the, the the main focus of the week was just to get some change of scenery, get away from the crap weather, which we know it's been at home for God knows how it feels like forever, and it's lovely here, and the surroundings are great. Um, an awful lot of media attention there is from the Turkish media, so much. Uh, which they won't be used to, to be fair. But they, um, they, 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 everybody seems really happy and everybody seems in good spirits. It's like it's like doing the nineteen oh four club with Judith Chalmers. This, it's you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm worried you had you chuckled there because I slightly thought, blimey, that might be an old reference. There'll be there'll be people listening to the nineteen oh four clubs. So Judith, who, who was Judith Chalmers? Oh, I mean, yeah, Judith Chalmers, absolute, yeah. Um, the, the travel guru she was, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I, what do you think? To um, I want to ask you actually about um, obviously City didn't play at the weekend because of Coventry, and, and you know, first chance to talk about that. What what a weekend for the FA Cup, and it's wrongly, in my opinion, much maligned uh, competition, certainly by some of the top managers. Jurgen Klopp, I'm looking at you, uh, but yeah, I think. Coventry did a phenomenal job. Obviously, no game against the Sky Blues um, this weekend because they were in, they were in the FA Cup. Did a, phenom a phenomenal comeback at, at, at the Molyneux. Um, but Norwich took, took full advantage, didn't they? You know, comfortable win away at Stoke. Of course, City's next opponent opponents on Good Friday. Uh, Three 0 win there, and that takes them into the playoffs and clear. What's your thoughts on that? 
Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I was, I've been a bit surprised it's taken Norwich so long to sort of get there, really. I, I, it was one of the games I saw last season. I think it was last season. I'm sure it was. And um, City down there. And I was really impressed with them at that point in terms of the quality of squad and the quality of football they played and the way they played. So it's been maybe a little surprise to to me and a little surprise to Norwich that it's taken them the, the time to to get there. I've been, I've been having a sort of shifty at it um, this morning. What a City of seventh, 58 points, three behind Norwich with a game in hand. Um, one ahead of Coventry on the same games. Do you think, that just as an aside really, do you think that the FA Cup will prove a, a, a distraction to Coventry now in terms of their playoff campaign? It's a, it's a good question, um, it's a and it's a question, question that always gets, it? gets levied. Yeah. Yeah, it is. As I say, it's, it's a question that always gets levied at teams that have got cup runs. Is it a just, I, I don't think it can be a bad thing for Coventry. I've got to be honest. I think you know, the, 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 the feeling that the club, the whole club would have got from beating Wolves in the manner that they did, I thought they played very well in the game, actually. I thought they were the better side. Really, really lucky to go from a goal up, having had chance after chance after chance. Where have we, where have we seen that before? Um, and then to, to come back and, and, and win it. So, and then look, they've got a, an FA Cup semi final to look forward to. I mean, who wouldn't, let's be honest, and call a spade a spade, who on earth wouldn't want that to look forward to? If, if, if this was Hull City, flip it, when we're saying, you know, Hull City have got a semi final against Manchester United to look forward to in, in April. Yeah, okay, it, it's it's an extra game, but what an opportunity. It's a phenomenal opportunity for Coventry. I, I think they'll be okay. I don't think, you know, the timing of the game against City, the, the, the rearranged game is interesting, coming not, not too long after the, the semi-final. I guess you would only say if they were to pick up a... If, if against United they would, or, or, or in training for United, they were to pick up an injury to, you know, to um, to Ellis Sims, to O'Hare, to, to Hadji Wright, then obviously you, could, you can make a case for it. But I, I, I don't see really how it can be a bad thing for them because the amount of confidence that they will get from, from that occasion, the, the, the only, again, possible negative is the sometimes after the Lord Mayor show, isn't it? The game, you know, after the semi-final, you know, the game before the semi-final of the, of the players understandably perhaps got one eye on the, on, on the, um, on the semi-final. That's up to Mark Robbins and his coaching staff to make sure that isn't the case. And then after the game, irrespective of the result at Wembley, how are they feeling after that? Are they, are they a bit, bit jaded, a bit leggy? Such a, a build-up and, you know, Wembley's a big pitch. It might be a hot day. You never know you look. Um, and it's, it's, they're all variables, aren't they? But I think on, on the whole, it's it's a it's an opportunity they will relish. And I think, if anything, it's probably going to enhance them going into the end of the season. I, I think I would agree. I'm sure they'll be buzzing. So City, what, 58 points, three, be, three behind Norwich, who've, uh, with City... Uh, um... <laughs> A game ahead, nine games to go for City. Last season, correct me if any of this is wrong, Buzz, because I'm, I'm interested to see where you feel that the the points total might come. Sixty nine plus goal difference got Sunderland into the playoffs. I think last season, goal difference could be a a, a, a big factor. Only Preston and Middlesbrough worse than City. Season before that, seventy five got Luton into the playoffs in twenty one twenty two. Seventy seven points got Bournemouth in twenty twenty one. 70 points uh, and goal difference got Swansea in in 1920, uh, uh, the 1920 um, season. So out of that, having done that little bit of research today, I'm none the wiser. Have you, have you, have you any feeling in, in what what they need? I think they need wins. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've looked at points total. I did a I did a piece on points totals a couple of weeks ago and. What you thought it might take them to get in the playoffs? Ultimately, you know, it, 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 I don't think it, it, it might not be as many as as, as, as that. I, I don't. For me, they've just got to. They've, they've got to. It's a cliche, isn't it? But they need to start winning games. I mean, it's funny enough. I said to in the press conference after the Leicester game, which was just. I know we've done that before, but what game? Um, mm. And um, I said to Liam, like, you're now seven games unbeaten. I know you've drawn four in a row, but you're seven games unbeaten, and, and at this stage of the season, that is. That's good, isn't it? And he was like, yeah, but you could flip yeah, it and say, well, four games without a win, which I found really interesting, actually, because Liam is the arbiter of positivity. He's got to be, as the head coach, he's got to push out the the positive message, et cetera, et cetera. But I was a bit taken aback when he, went, he flipped it around onto me and went, yeah, but it's four games without a win. So, um, Which is what I said. Yeah, absolutely. Game, four games I, without a win. That's I, I, the I harsh just, reality of it. Yeah, 
I, I don't know. I'd be interested to get your thoughts on this, actually. I don't know if now, because they're out of the playoffs, if that actually coming into the final nine games, if that actually helps them rather than be the, the hunted, they're now the hunter. And, you know, there's always a lot of pressure on there's, the team that are sixth because you, you are, let's be, let's be fair, West Brom are gone. Obviously, we know we know third and fourth are accounted for as well. We don't know who, but they're accounted for. Um, so you've got that that clutch of teams that are now fighting for one place, haven't you? You've got Norwich City, um, as in Norwich and Hull City. You've got Coventry, Preston, uh, you know Cardiff, probably out of it. Yeah. Cardiff, yeah, I wouldn't. Want, I think Car- I don't. I've never really considered Cardiff genuine contenders. I know they had that. They've had a good run, but they were they were soundly beaten at Car- at Swansea in the in the in the, in the Derby at the weekend. Uh, I think if they were, I know they're still not. You look at the table, and you think, oh, that's, that's not many points. But I don't see Cardiff as a genuine as a genuine contender. I don't think they've been con- consistent enough throughout the season. Borough, yeah, again, you thought they started to make tracks, didn't they? They won the, you know, three or four in a row, but then didn't beat Blackburn at home. You thought that was that was really a home banker for them. Uh, so you wouldn't rule them out. Of course you wouldn't, because anything can happen at this stage of the season. But I, I, I think realistically, it is one from Norwich, Hull City, um, Coventry and, and Preston. So, But they just need to start winning games. I, I don't think it's any more complicated than that. You know, they, they, we, we, And we've talked about this at length over, over the course of the season. They, they do not win enough football matches at home. That is a concern. Um, that has to change starting on Good Friday. I know we'll... We'll cover the Stoke game more in depth next week, but that is, you know, that's going to be another sellout. It's pretty much sold out now, and we're not even we're nowhere near the game. So there's going to be another big crowd there, another big expectant crowd, and um, and, and and City will will need to beat Stoke, and Stoke are a, a poor side and they're struggling. But you can you can almost guarantee that they'll suddenly, having been tonked by Norwich, they'll come and be will beaters at the MKM next next Friday, won't you? Oh, they're in trouble, aren't they? And, and you look at the fixtures. I mean, they've got Stoke at home, relegation candidates, Leeds away, obviously promotion candidates, Cardiff away. I know what you're saying, but at, at this stage, we've got to say they've still got a chance of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough at home, again, same sort of scenario, still got a chance of the playoffs. QPR at home, um, not clear of relegation, are they? Watford are sort of mid-table. Um, Coventry away, playoffs. Ipswich at home, promotion chasing. And then Plymouth away, not completely away from relegation. So th- there's there's nothing in there, apart from maybe the Watford game, where the other team have no incentive to to, to be at the very top of their game. So I think that helps. Yeah. yeah, I think... But I think that... I think... That actually will play into their favour. The Watford, the, I said this before. The Watford game bothers me. That um, they've been absolutely terrible all season. Obviously, Ishmael's gone. Tom Clever has gone in. Got a good result to start with. Uh, if it was at home, I wouldn't be some. I'd, I'd probably be more confident. I, I don't. There's something about going. De- to I thought they looked a decent side. Yeah, but Watford at, at the MKM. I, I was impressed with them. I, I expected them to kick on a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair point. That that game troubles me a bit for some reason. I can't put my finger on why, but going to Watford, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I think they'll go to Cardiff and get a result. It, but I, it's, it comes back to me for me the home form. It, if they are going to get in the top six, and if they are going to now overhaul Norwich, um, it is it is going to have to be. They are going to have to start winning games at home. And you know, points. I know Liam always talks about points accumulation, and I respect that completely, of course. But points accumulation is great. If you're adding three points to that, that accumulation and, and at home, they don't do it often enough and haven't done. I think it's now three three wins in ten at home. Uh so that is something they need to change. And that Stoke will Stoke is a is, is a great opportunity to do that. The Leeds game, I'm I'm concerned that they that they're gonna go there without Jacob Greaves. That worries me. Because, you know, um if you look at the if you look at the who scored player ratings over the course of the year so far and the EFL work with who scored so that they are reputable. Uh, Jacob Greaves is along with Yannick Vestergaard at Leicester is, is the best centre half in the league. Um, so any team is going to miss a player of, of Jacob's ability. Fully enough, actually, I was uh, at training earlier on, right early on when they were, they were doing one drill um, and he made two absolutely belting blocks in front of his own goal. And I, it kind of just rammed home to me what a good player is. And that, and that is no, 
I'm not. There's no criticism or any, any thinly veiled aim at, at Sean McLaughlin, who's a very, very good player. But I just think Jacob's leadership, the way he's he's he's, he's developed over the course of this this year, in particular the last four or five months, um, is a threat at the other end of the pitch as well. Now I think that is going to be a big blow for them um, over over the Easter weekend. Not so much against Stoke. I think they can. I, I think at home they can probably get away with it. But you know, it, it, given what's going to come at Ellen Road, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure coming their way at, at different times in that game. Um, and I, 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 I'm concerned that they're not going to have Jacob Greaves. Um, but yeah, look, Sean will I, cope I, with it. Sean McLaughlin will cope with it. Yeah, he's, yeah. You know, he, 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 what he an opportunity. Was, you know, let's not forget he was he was keeping uh, at one point under Liam Rossini, he, he was keeping Jacob Greaves out of that left sided centre half position, and Jacob Greaves yeah. was unhappily playing at left back. So you know he'll he'll come in and do a job, and and you're always going to have that. You you run the risk of if you're a defender or any player picking up um picking up a, a suspension through the season. It's it's the goals, Baz. Where where are they still not scoring enough for me? Where where's yeah. the goals going to come from? Is is Connolly going to be ready to to start a game? I don't want to get into the Billy Sharp thing again because I just banged on about it on the last two nineteen oh four clubs. So you know, or is he going to stick with the with with the the you know the no striker, play the Fab Four or whatever? Yeah, I've got to be honest, and that's a discussion that we've been having here. Uh, and I've, I, I've I said this morning actually that the goals again worry me. When you look at Norwich, they've put eight. You know, they were a couple of weeks, well two games ago. They were level on goal difference. Um, they're now they've put eight different. Uh, they've put eight on beating Rotherham five nil, and then w- winning the way at Stoke three nil. I can't see at this stage. I'd I'd be struggling to make a case for Hull City clawing that back based on what we've seen so far. I've I've not got the stats to hand, admittedly, but if I think if I just think back throughout the season, I can't remember too many games where City have scored four, three or four. You've got you know Stoke away. You've got. Um, Blackburn at home. You've obviously got Rotherham and Sheffield Wednesday, where they've scored four, but there haven't been many games. There certainly haven't been anything like winning five nil against Nor- like Norwich did against Ro- a, a really, I mean, admittedly, an absolutely t- terrible Rotherham team of, who have now put up the white flags. Uh, but they need to start scoring some goals because they're not given. And Liam's admitted this himself. They're not given. They, and Tyler Morton has, and you know, I could I could probably re- reel off another four or five players who I've spoken to in the last six weeks who have said, "Yeah, everything's great, but we're not scoring enough goals." And that is that is going to come down to it. Uh, you know, if it, the t- final two or three games, goal difference is worth an extra point. Uh, we see it at every at every level, um, and it it may well, it, you know, come come that final couple of games, goal difference could come into play. And I I, I don't foresee a situation where in the ni- next nine games City are going to claw back that 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 deficit. And I think. So they are going to have to win. What well, they are going to have to get w- one result more than Norwich, be that a win or a draw, um, because they aren't going to overtake Norwich's goal difference. And Norwich will keep scoring, and that's the that is the benefit of having someone like Josh Sargent, you know, up the top of scoring goals. City don't have a player like that. Uh, they've obviously missed Liam Delap. That's a big. I'm not saying that Liam Delap would have hit you know hit 15, 20 goals, but he's certainly um, you know he was in great form, wasn't he? And he, he, it was the chaos that he was causing for other people to benefit as well, as much as is what he was doing himself. And I think um, in Connolly and Sharp, they haven't got that magic formula. Connolly, interesting today, actually, Connolly was on the train, training had finished, the, the actual session had finished, a couple of hour session. Um, and then Liam was working with, Liam was doing some tactical work with, with Jacob and Sean. Um, the goalkeepers, Ivor and, and, and Ryan Orsop were doing their own little thing. Cyrus Christie and Matty Jacob were working with Dawes on the other side. Uh, but Aaron Connolly was, was, um, Working in, in front of goal with with Justin Walker uh, and Matt Ingram was in goal and he was he spent it must have been a good half an hour after the session, um, you know, working on his his his, his movement in the penalty area, his finishing, uh, and then they were they, they were locked in discussion probably for another good ten minutes after that. Uh, Walker and um, Connolly, he's got a new haircut, um, so we'll have to wait and see. Connolly is just a he's he's a touch player, isn't he? In the sense that he needs he needs games, he needs to feel loved, he needs to feel confident. Uh, and and I've, I've, we've not seen enough from him since that Norwich game where he got absolutely cleaned out by Angus Gunn. We've not seen anything from him really, have we at all? And that um, he's looked he's looked a shadow of, of, of his former self. And we know when he's fit and he's firing, he's a real threat at, at this level. But um, I'm still not convinced that if, the, if if we were playing a game tomorrow, if, if the Stoke game was this Friday, for example, I don't 
I, I can't imagine a situation where Liam doesn't go with any with anything but Abdush, Carvalho, Philogene, and, and Zaruri. You, you can see that. Um, I'm, I'm just checking some of the tweets that came in, um, or, or I can spot one anyway at this point. Uh, JDB says, we know that Liam has a way of playing low tempo out from the back that he won't change. We get it. But with nine games left and Norwich at three points and better goal difference above us, is it time to be pragmatic and play a different way? Just for nine games, do or die for six, two strikers, go for it. Well, we've just discussed they're struggling to get one striker. Where are they going to get two strikers from necessarily on no, the pitch? I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't see him changing. I, I, you know, he's, he's, no he's got his method. He's going to stick to it. And he's got his method. His method has got the team with nine games to go You're contending freezing. for a playoffs. And, and, and having a glass there. there. Have I? Oh, blimey. What's that about? Yeah, you you know like yeah you went like freeze you started pulling all kinds of different shapes. I think I've got you back there. Back. All right. Okay. So I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, don't see any change, shape or form, really. No. What are you again? Um, just tapping back into what I saw at training today was um, was really interesting. He he, he was uh, he, he was stopping the session. They were they were trying to get the ball um, out. They were basically playing like um, five five passes from the goalkeeper. They had to play five passes to get through, um, but they were playing in, in, a, in a, a really tight space to try and get um, you know, get the ball out wide. And they, he, he stopped it quite a few times because he wanted the ball going in the box quicker. Um, and that was I found that really interesting. And then he was, you know, there, there were a couple of times the ball went out wide to the left, and they maybe they they, they play another pass inside. And he was and he was like, well, that's if we lose the ball there. You know we're, we're we're out of shape, um, and the other team is is attacking us. And and um, he was he was asking his, his players to get the ball in a lot an awful lot quicker, uh, which I liked actually. Um, there are a couple of moments where I'm, the, the ball's come to Ozan on the edge of the box, and I'm thinking just bloody hit it. You know the, the opening's there, and he's, he's looked for the pass out, out wide to Louis Coyle or whoever uh, Sellers Fleming was on the right at times as well. Uh, looked all right to be fair, but um, but yeah, there's, there was definitely a sh- from what I what I've seen today. You know a real shift in. In, let's get the ball moving quicker around the penalty area, and when the, when that opportunity comes, get either get get the shot away or get the ball in. But in terms of his style, no, not a chance, and no, nor should he. I don't think you know, they've got to sixth, seventh in the table, playing their way. Um, and yeah, we can critique it. And yes, at times it, it's frustrating. You think move it quicker, but you know uh, get more shots away. But ultimately, Liam, Liam, his style and the way he plays. Uh, has got City to where they are in the table, and if he was to change it now, it just it just wouldn't work because the the players aren't they're, they're coached a certain way, and he's brought he's been at pains to it to say this over the over the last few months. You know, we've signed players like Abdush and, and Carvalho and Zaruri for this way of playing. If we suddenly start going, I made the joke to Ryan also actually earlier on because he was messing about and he was pinging some heck, some really good shots in, into the net. I was like. You could be, you could solve the striking problem. You could, you could go up front and be the target man, and you'd certainly cause some chaos. But th- that isn't their style. They aren't going to do that. They haven't got the players for that. And if they suddenly started doing that, they'd, lo- they'd start, lo- they'd drop down the table like a stone because that isn't their way. So, no chance. I mean, I understand the question, uh, uh, but he's not. He's married to his style. That is how they play, uh, and he he will retain complete and utter belief that you know over the course of the next nine games they will collect enough points to beat Norwich to get in the top six. Yeah, it's just gone all misty eyed. You mentioned Ryan also playing up front. I went full Alan Fettis there. What a lovely lad he was, the City <laughs> goalkeeper that scored a couple yeah. of goals. Ma- magic days. Um, this is a serious point, Baz, because uh, I know you put a tweet out, or well, the 1904 club put a tweet out. Uh, the Ginger 42 says, uh, with the open letter the club published last weekend, an adjunct mentioning how what we're doing is not a sustainable model, is this season make or break for us? Where are you at on this, Baz? What do you know? I don't think it's make or break necessarily. No, I think you know they've obviously got a plan in place. They're they're ahead of their schedule. I think. Um, I think if you look at where the squad was last summer compared to where it is now at the end or at the end of January to now, I think uh, they're certainly ahead of where they thought they would be. Uh, but I think that, look, I think it's the reality of being a club in the championship. If you don't get promoted, you are at risk of of uh, of selling. One or two of your, your assets, and I, I think it would be, I think it would be naive to think that City would go into next season with 
a squad like they've got now uh, with the quality of Carvalho, Morton, Zorori, uh, Jaden Philogene, Jacob Greaves. I, I think that is just fanciful. Uh, I think that, you know, the, the way the, the way the governance thing is, obviously the, the Premier League, rene- well, not necessarily reneging on the deal, but not not agreeing on the, on the financial deal to the EFL it has caused a big problem. I think clubs were bank some clubs were banking on that on that finance coming through, and were hoping for it, and were possibly preparing sketchy business plans based around what they thought was going to be coming through from the Premier League. Uh, that isn't the case now. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to be the case now. Uh, but I, we'll have to wait and see. I, look, it, it's impossible to predict what's going to happen in the summer. But I think if City don't get promoted, then I think it's it's. It's only it's only reasonable to understand that they're going to have to sell a player. They, they got away with it last summer. They didn't. They didn't sell. Obviously, Keane went two summers ago. Uh, they didn't sell anybody last summer and strengthened. Uh, I think if, if they don't get don't get into the Premier League, then the real, you're probably going to have a, there is going to have to be a conversation around Greaves and, and Philogene. And Philogene is is probably your, your, your big asset. You could probably get certainly 20 million pounds for Philogene in the current market, which is a, let's be fair, is a massive, massive profit on a player you paid around about 5 million pounds for only a year before. Uh, and Greavesy as well. I mean, I, I'd be loathe to see Greavesy go because I, might want it. they both might want to go, Buzz. If, yeah, well, if, that's, if they don't go up, they, they might think, well, there's interest in me. And, you know, I feel I'm ready for the Premier League. I'd, you know, let's, I'd, Let's say I, I might want to go. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that situation. Hopefully, but you know that that remains a possibility. And I think, I mean, if they don't if if they don't go up, then I people have got different views on this. I think the the fact they've got a reasonable amount of loans is not a bad thing because you because you're not committed to the finances of those wages. You can regroup, you reset in the summer, and bring other loan players in. Um, so I, I personally wouldn't worry too much about that, but hopefully they're not in the situation. Hopefully they, they make the playoffs and they get up and Philogene and Greece want to be part of it in, in the Premier League next season. But um, nine games to, to fight, well, it might not be nine games, uh, might not go to the end of the season. I just, I, I, look, more and more, as we've been talking this morning, looking at the, um, looking at Easter, as so often, it's crucial. Yeah, if, I think if, if they could come away with four points from the, the two games over Easter, I think you'd be well happy with that. Um, yeah, I but yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I don't, I, I don't think. Look, it's part of football. Player trading is is what keeps football going, and I don't think it's anything to to shy away from. It's not a conversation that should be shied away from. Um, you know, ho- hopefully we're in a position where Hulson have, 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 have got promotion through the playoffs, and they're. You know, you 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 keep Philogene, you keep Greaves, and you look to add players of that level of quality and higher to to to, to ensure you can compete in the Premier League. Um, if they don't get promoted, then it's just re- it's the reality of being a, a club out. I mean, there's clubs in the Premier League that can't. We, 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 I know there's it's all over the place at the minute. What's going on? What's going on in the Premier League? It's a mess. Um, a mess they've created, by the way. But clubs in the Premier League are having to sell their best players just to comply with the nonsense nonsensical PSR thing. So, you know. A club in the championship will have to sell players. That is just basic economics. If you are going to fund, um, you know, a squad, you've got to sell players. I think the point you raised there about the loan players is a, is, a, is is very good and it's pertinent. And I think, you know, it, if they don't get if they don't go up, you know, they, they've put themselves in a fantastic position to go and cherry pick some of the best loan players um, from from Premier League clubs over the over the course of the summer. You look at the you, you look at Dilap, you look at Carvalho, you look at Morton. Two, you know, three of the the top top young players in this country have, have picked Hall City, and they've picked Hall City for a reason. And I think that that reason isn't going to suddenly change overnight if they don't get promoted. That you know, if Liam isn't suddenly going to not be able to to bring those play, that level of, of player in if they don't get up. So I don't. I, it will be my only concern about the summer if they don't go up is is once again the turnover of players, and that is you know. What you want to see over, over over the course of time is you want to see a settled squad that gets added to each each through each window. You're not so you're not seeing eight, nine, ten players coming in every single window. You're seeing, you know, maybe one or two or two or three just to supplement, and you keep that that continuity. But obviously, if they get promoted, what I don't know if you've seen it, but I did a piece this morning. Uh, Liam, talk, I, I asked him the question. I said, "Look, how on earth do you go about preparing your recruitment situation when you've got?" You know, you could be in the Premier League, and there you've got you've got recruitment plan A 
But if you're in the championship, you've got recruitment plan B. How on earth do you go about kind of working through that? And he was very clear. And he said, look, I'm a firm believer that if you get promoted, you don't need to make wholesale changes. You, you know, you, the players that have got you there deserve the um, the opportunity to, to to keep you there. Uh, and also, he said, and he said this to me a few weeks ago as well. I'm I'm coaching my players to be Premier League players, whether that's with Hull City or in, in case of cases of Zorori or, or Giles or Carvalho, etc. Players that when they go back to the parent clubs, if they do go back to the parent clubs, then they're better prepared to be Premier League players. Um, so he will hope that if, if they do go up, that you know they, they keep the the, the 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 basis of their squad together. Add to it, of course, but you know I don't think I, I wouldn't expect locks wholesale changes if they were to get promoted. Um, and if if they if they don't get promoted, then you know they will access the loan route once again, which has been so so great for them this year. Mm. Just you, you touched on the, the the chaos in the Premier League. Um, you know, obviously. Forest getting a, a points deduction. Everton have had their points reduction uh, reduced. There's still the, the the biggest elephant in the room of Manchester City's 115 um, alleged breaches of, of of football finance. And we've got the, the you know the government coming in to to regulate football, which I can see the the need for some sort of regulation. But what, and I, I might have made this point before on the 1904 club. They can't run the water industry, and that should be much more simple than you know. There is government regulation in the water industry that should be much more simple, but than football. But um, it isn't because there's poo in our rivers, poo on our beaches, and everything like that. So uh, I, I can see the need for more regulation. I'm just not convinced the government will be able to do it. And football has become so confusing now. Because you don't, especially in the Premier League, you 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 might not know who's going to get relegated until the middle of the summer, as the lawyers get involved. It's it's just become hugely hugely difficult. I can see why they're trying to do it, so we don't have the situation of, of clubs going bust. But it's the, the whole thing's become nuts. Where are you on the increased regulation? Um, I I worry that the government are getting involved. Um, bearing in mind they couldn't organise a you-know-what in a brewery, uh, and for the reasons you've so eloquently highlighted with the water system, that the, the government are a shambles, um, the country is, is a mess, uh, and now they're trying to get involved in football. And I, I, that worries me. You know, that political interference in football is, is a problem. Um, we've seen how FIFA have dealt with political interference over the over the, over the years. They've um, And I, I'm, I'm talking about an organisation that have, you know, you wouldn't trust with a 10 foot barge pole if you've got one, you know, in your garden. Uh, so I, I, I'm not, I'm not keen. I, I just think the whole thing's a mess. I really think the whole, and everybody knows I'm a, you know, I was a season ticket holder at Forest for 25 years. I covered the club before I came to, to Hull. Um, it's a club that I care deeply about. Um, and seeing Forest go from bottom of the championship to, to the Premier League, you know, the day out, the day out, me and my brother Adam Wembley was, um, in May, when Forest beat Huddersfield, was was something I will never, never, ever forget. Uh, they've they've got themselves in a problem. You know, they've they've signed a lot of players, paid an awful lot of money. But I thought the, st the statement they put out on the the the, the owner put out on um, on Monday was was absolutely bang 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 perfect. Uh, and it it just saddens me really that Baz, sorry to interrupt. Would a regulator have stopped that? Because he he I'm... was he was throwing money around like. Yeah, I'm not and sure. The, the recruitment was just bonkers. Yeah, I'm not sure it would, but the trouble, the problem, the problem you've got, and City will have the same problem. Maybe not to the same extent, but they'll have a similar problem. That you, you know, you, you've been out when you've been out of the Premier League for so long. For, in Forest's case, 23 years. You know, that's for that. You, you may, you, you may as well have never been in the Premier League as, as been out 23 years because it, it cha it's changed so much. Um, and the the level of recruitment, they, they, you know, somebody said to me that, that, that Forest promotion was built on quicksand because they, they had so many players on loan they had uh a lot of players out of contract so they had to go and and, and you want clubs to be competitive you don't want you know that, that kind of iron curtain around the top four or five six clubs that it basically every season you know you know the two or three clubs that are going to, going to challenge for the, the top flight the, the biggest sponsorships the biggest stadiums the, the biggest share of the tv revenue um you want it to be a competitive division and for forest to be competitive they had to go out and try and sign. Okay, I'm not suggesting they should have signed 40 players over two years, but 
they had to do an awful lot of recruitment. And if City go up, you know, Ajun will want to spend, but he's being, he's being, he will be of his wings clipped. He won't be allowed to. And that, and that frustrates me. I think there needs to be something where owners within reason are allowed to spend, you know, if, they, if, if they've got, if Maranakis has got deep pockets, he wants to splurge 400 million pounds on transfers to try and make his club better. Should he not be allowed to do that? You know, and pretty much any other walk of business, if you want to invest in your company, you can do. Um, yeah. I, I, so I have this inherent, inherent problem with it. Um, I, I get that they're trying to protect clubs from going out of business. I mean, in reality, not too many at the top level have done. And have, you know, there have been situations, Reading have got themselves into a pickle. Um, but maybe the, the, there can be something done around protecting um, a club if, if, you know, if, if the owner decides that he's, he's had enough, he's bored, like Reading, you know, Young's got bored, ploughed in his money, got bored, walked away, I can't be bothered anymore. Mal Morris, ploughed in a load of money, tried to gamble on the on the Premier League dream, didn't work, and, and Derby were, you know, were, were, in, were in dire trouble. Um, maybe there's something that can be done there about a certain amount of finance is put into a, a safe account to protect the club's future, you know, God forbid, what happens if something, you know, what happens if something happens to um, Ajun? You know, what, 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 where, where are Hull City at? We saw it, we saw it with Forrest a few years ago with Nigel Doughty. You know, all of a sudden you click your finger and the owner had died. He'd had a heart attack in his gym and that benefactor was gone. Suddenly Forrest had plunged into absolute financial chaos, you know, and, and the, the, the estate basically had to fund the club until the end of the season, whereby they could, they could then try and sell it. You know, this is, these are things that need to be looked at. I'm just not convinced that the current, obviously the current PSR things are shambles. Yeah, go, go on. Well, I was going to say, what, what is the, the nub of Adjun's argument? What, is, what does he want the Premier League to do? I think that they think there should be a greater share of finance coming from the, from the Premier League down into the EFL. But that said, I can kind of, playing devil's advocate, I can kind of see where the Premier League clubs are coming from because they're basically the Premier League clubs are saying, well, why should I give, I'm, I'm going to make up figures. I'm a Premier League club. I'm, I'm Everton. Why should I give Leicester City 20 million pounds? Because that's going to strengthen Leicester City who are a rival. Leicester City get promoted. Suddenly Leicester City have got, have been able to sign a, a player worth 20 million because Everton's share was 20 million pounds. Do you see what I'm saying? So I can, I can kind of see where, I don't necessarily agree with it, but from a Premier League standpoint, I can kind of to understand why the, the, the clubs in the Premier League are reticent to give a competitive advantage to clubs further down. That's why I, it's the, the whole thing, that, the trouble is they've got themselves into this big old mess um, and clubs are clubs are only interested in their own, you know, they're all self-serving. That, you know, Liverpool don't care about anybody else apart from Liverpool. Yeah. And that, and that, you know, that, that is just how it goes. You know, that they haven't, Liverpool couldn't give, Liverpool couldn't give two hoots about the football pyramid in the sense that it's all about what Liverpool can do and how can Liverpool be financially prove, prove, proven. And I, I use Liverpool well, as, look at as, the You look at the Super League. Yeah, you I know, use Liverpool pure, as one example. Pure, you could pick any other. Yeah, exactly. Of course they are. And that, is, and that is the issue here is, the issue is, Clubs don't want to give other clubs competitive advantages, i.e., cash. Um, so, but as you touched on before, it, everything's you know so much of this of this stuff is going to be decided not out on the pitch where it should be, um, but in courtrooms. And I mean, it, it, I find it just ridiculous to think that the Premier League season could finish in in the middle of May, yet we don't know who's getting relegated and who's not. I mean, fortunately, it looks like because the, the, this in the Forest case. The process has happened fairly quickly. If they are to appeal, then that may happen quicker. We might get a, a judgment on any appeal sanction earlier than we thought. But even so, I mean, I just think it's embarrassing for football, isn't it? And it, you know, English football is always held up as the bastion of, of football. You know, we invented it and all that nonsense. But it's an absolute mess. It really is a mess. Um, I, I don't know what more else to say. I just think it's really sad. And ultimately, football fans are. You know, are just left kind of left in limbo, not knowing what's going on, um, and it's all being fought out in courtrooms and potentially now in the in the chamber of the Palace of Westminster. Which for me, I'm not I'm not comfortable with that personally, given the fact you can't yeah. trust them. If um, I must admit, if I was doing a degree thesis, I'd probably do that on the um, on you know football regulation and everything like that but anyway that's something for another day and i'm you know in my semi-retirement i'm not thinking of doing a degree thesis 
Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I, it, was, it was worth touching on because it, it will affect all of us as football fans. It'll affect every club in terms of how this all washes out. Um, hopefully, we won't yeah. get to the situation where we where we do get more berries and things like that. Um, Scott uh, McIntyre says, drop points has left us needing snookers. Unless the wheels fall off at Norwich, we need 21-plus points from nine games. Uh, that would take them to uh, 79 points. I think they'd be fine with 79. Right. So I don't think I they think need 21 points. If uh, they get to 79, I think they're in. Yeah, unrealistic given uh, a tricky run in. Uh, a couple of things, uh, Baz, you may know better than me. Um, Tigers on top say maybe just something I've picked up, but what's going on with our academy? Seems the whole youth thing isn't going too great, which is summed up by Sims leaving. Uh, also a point made by Matty T to the 1904 club. What's going on with the academy? What do you know? Um, I don't think there's anything going on with the academy. I think there's one or two people that uh, have got to be in the bonnet about certain things and are, so are stoking it up on social media, uh, which right, inevitably okay. you get people um, j jumping on the bandwagon. What I would say is, um, you know, a lot of, if you look at the players, they've got 21 players out on loan. Um, admittedly, okay, some of them are, are, are first team players, but there's an awful lot of those players that are academy players, the likes of Tom Nixon out on loan at Doncaster doing really well. I think there's eight, I think, I think there's, if I'm right in thinking, there's eight players from the the current what would be the under twenty one squad um, that are currently out on loan playing in the in either the year fall or the or the top of the national league. Um, I guess you would say if you put those uh, players into the into the the, the, the under twenty one team, you get different results. It's yeah, so I think a lot of the players that are playing um, a lot of the, a, a lot of the young players that are playing for the eighteens and the twenty ones are you know like starting out their careers they're playing against older you know perhaps older players further down their progression i think it ultimately what you're trying to do is you, the academy is, is there to, to to create footballers that can come into the first team you look you look here this week we've got rocco coils here ollie green's here two sellers flemings here matty jacob is one of those players that's now come through into the first team jacob greaves was one of those players that is now you know rated as one of the top center backs in, in the championship and we'll, we'll Arguably, arguably, whatever happens, be playing in the Premier League next year. Um, you know, and you, you're trying to get players, you're trying to get players ready to play first team football. And if 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 part of their part of their development, it's absolutely crucial they go and play men's football. And you know, to have eight players out playing, you know, oh, EFL football is 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 good. Yeah, they could be playing. You know, those eight players, Tom Nixon, who's played what thirty odd times for Doncaster, could could have played thirty odd times for Hull City's under twenty ones. But then he's not going to be ready, be really. Same player, absolutely. And so. You know, I think a lot's made of it. Look, look at Jim Sim. You know, Jim Sims came in with a, you know, a, there was a, a lot of hoo-ha about him. He scored a few goals in, 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 in the in the younger age groups. He's gone to with. I'm not, and this is meant as no disrespect. He's gone to play for Withenshaw Town. If do you not think? And this is where fans get so. I don't think they think clearly. Do you not think if Jim Sims was was given City's issues up front? You know, the fact that Aaron Connolly has been struggling with injury. Liam Delaps is out for a while. Uh, they, they had to sign, obviously, Billy Sharp at the age of 37, as he was. Do we not think if if, if Jim Sims was was ready for, for, for first-team football at championship level, he would have been given a chance? Do you think Liam would have just, oh, it's all right, let him go to Withenshaw Town in, in the 10th tier of whatever it is? I, I, I sometimes think that, you know, we, 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 missed, we missed the bigger picture when you get one or two on, on social media that, that you know, have got, perhaps have got an axe, axe to grind against certain individuals for whatever reason, they know that, that only they will know, um, and, and they start whipping up a frenzy that other sheep, um, other fans, um, sometimes jump on the, on the on the bandwagon with. And I don't think it's healthy. Uh, and also, the, the, you're dealing with kids, aren't you? You're dealing with kids of, and, and naturally, kids develop at different ages. You know, you have peaks and troughs. Some years, some years you'll have a, a set of good results. Some years you'll have a set of not so good results. But ultimately, they're trying to they're trying to create players for the first team. And if that means sending your players out. Look at Will Jarvis, gone to Shelbourne, is doing really well. You know, Will, Will Jarvis could come back in the summer, at whatever level City are at, could come back in the summer and be a, a first team, a real a real player for next for next season. Would he have become that if he just stayed in the in the twenty in the 21s and helped them beat Fleetwoods under 21s? I'm not so sure. No, I agree. Good answer, Buzz. Good answer. Uh, I don't I, know how I'm, long we've got I'm, left, but I'll... I'm not, I'm not just, I, I'm not like, 
trying to be a club mouthpiece or anything. They, they will take care of, you know, answer. they will take care of all that. But I, I think sometimes it's important to try and be objective in these situations and not and not just jump on a bandwagon that's been, you know, that, and there are, you know, you've only got to take a look on social media and I mean, I, and you will see there is a bandwagon now that's being created. And every time that the, the, the under 18s or the under 21s lose a game, people are jumping on it. And, it, you know, Connor Sellers is getting a lot of hammer. Um, again, I think that is, does anybody know Connor Sellers? You know, does anybody, has anybody worked with him? One or two people have, but maybe they've made it in the football club have made a decision that they didn't particularly like. So they've got a, an ax to grind. Uh, I just think there's a bigger picture here. And I, I, I sometimes think it's an easy you know, social media is, is not a fair barometer of actually what is happening in life. Shock. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think we will discuss on a future episode is is the, the first team in social media. It's, 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 some, it's a discussion I'd like to have, but I'd like to do it with Fletch and you and, and, and Prutz when we're back to the full crew when they're not doing something uh, else. El Nacho's got the big important question of the day to the 1904 club. It's only for you. Because I had porridge, important question. How's the breakfast buffet? Do you know what? I didn't, I've got to be honest, I didn't go down for breakfast this morning because I, um, you just I didn't get, get in, Buzz? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't get a lot of sleep. I, I, I don't think I got to sleep till about three or four o'clock this morning. Um, and so I was, I was shattered. So, um, but I know from previous staying at Regnum, it is incredible. Uh, and I will be sure to go down there tomorrow. I, we, we went for the lunch buffet, which was spectacular. And the dinner buffet tonight, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, Everybody talks about the food. Interestingly, actually, Hull City aren't the only team training here. You've got uh, Ruben Kazan, the, the Russian team, are here um, and all their entourage and, and whatnot. And also the North Macedonia team are also staying here. Um, so it's pretty hectic. And dinner time is is hectic, to say the least. Okay. Are we going to leave it on that happy note? Or is there that, but I was just, another um, point to make? It... it no, 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 no. I had porridge and some yogurt this morning. No. That was my breakfast buffet at Burns Towers. <laughs> uh, and is there a fans forum or anything like that? This and um, meet the players or meet the owner, meet the manager, sort of Q and A this week. Yeah. So the the game is scheduled for Thursday afternoon. I think it's four o'clock. The last I heard, it was going to be four o'clock here, which is one o'clock back at home. Uh, as I said before, the fans have got. Uh, are supposed to be coming to the, the training ground uh, to Regnum here uh, tomorrow. So that's Wednesday to watch training. And then on, um, I believe on Thursday after the game, there was talk of a, a, a fans Q&A with, with Ajun um, and probably Tan and I guess Liam as well. Um, I haven't had that confirmed. The fans may have done because obviously they're staying at a different hotel. So they're, um, I haven't seen their schedule for, for a couple of days now, but I know that was the original plan. I know that the, the we were supposed to have a press conference um, around the game as well. Uh, so hopefully that takes place. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for the fans, you know, what, what a, it's incredible, isn't it? You know, some of the, some of the, the guys on the, the flight out yesterday had never flown before. And suddenly their first flight is out on the, the Hull City branded aircraft flying out to Antalya at the, the expense of the owner and the football club. So, um, you know, you, you can't help but, but marvel at what the football club are doing, can you? And, um, you know, that's been that's been borne out by the amount of the attendances. The attendances are up. You know, it's going to be a sellout against Stoke. They've they've sold out all their tickets for for Leeds, which is a game on the telly. Um, credit to Leeds, by the way, and I'm the first to criticise them because um, I don't particularly like them. But that is that that they um, they re they did a reciprocated deal on ticket prices. So um, City fans were charged, I think, no more than twenty four pounds for for the game at Ellen Road. Bearing in mind, most of their games this season have been like thirty five forty, so that's quite a saving. So. City have sold out all their tickets for that, which is good. So that promises to be a quite an occasion on Easter Monday under the lights, doesn't it? And uh, I'm with you. I think it's got to be a four point weekend at least, really. To um, I think it's it, it's crucial this Easter weekend, as so often. Uh, are we back next week with with Prutz and Fletch? Yeah, back next week. I, I'm hoping um, that we might have a, another episode. Uh, later in the week, probably after the game uh, against uh, the Curacao national team, managed by Dick Advocat, but we'll, we'll we'll keep an eye out on the social channels for that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try and do something. We might have another bonus episode as well with with one or two surprise guests. So we'll, we'll see. I'm hoping that we've got one or two nice things planned for the rest of the week, but we'll see what happens. It's 
things are fluid over here, as you can probably imagine. And it, it, is it true now, Baz, that the 1904 Club is going out on a ded dedicated YouTube channel? Is this the is this the thing now? Yes, yes, that is that is now a thing. People apparently, and I can't understand why. Maybe it's for pros. You know, the, the ladies love pros, don't they? Um, maybe it's, so. Yeah, we are on the the, the 1904 Club does have a, a YouTube channel, as Bernsey says. We, you can watch if if you can watch us there. We will have live streams. You can also follow. Um, I've been asked to do a tour diary on video, a, a short three-minute package. Um, the first one went up on the channel last night, so you can see us uh, checking into the the airport, milling around the the airport, getting on the, on the aircraft, landing, and a bit around the uh, the hotel. And there'll be a few more bits. There'll be one going up later today uh, from trading and a bit more about the hotel. So, um, so yeah, and like I say. I think I think they'll be disappointed. It's me and you today, and not Prutz and Fletch. I was, who do I talk to Smalesy then for a clothing allowance? Because you know I'm, I'm wearing black and trying to breathe in and out. Obviously, <laughs> because you've got to combine the two. But uh, now we're going to be YouTube superstars. Is there a clothing allowance? Does Prutz get a personal beard fluffer or anything like that? Which is you know what demands should we make? You should see the list of things that he sent to me. He's like, Baz, if we're going to go, if we're going to go out on the YouTube, I need this. This he's, you think Mariah Carey is bad is all I'll say. You've seen nothing <laughs> until you've seen Prutton's list of de demands. Okay, right. So yeah, on that bombshell. Um, but yeah, you can you can watch this on on the YouTube channel. Like I say, hopefully over the next few months there'll be plenty of other videos from the the, the podcast from behind the scenes that wherever we get to usually so it usually involves food so if you don't like food i'd probably not bother if i were you um if, but if equally if you do like david Prutton's haircut give it a like and subscribe anything to add bernsey no I, 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 it seems like a natural end so uh thank you for your company <laughs> i'm very jealous Bass. i'm very jealous and thank you for all your messages to the 1904 club uh, we'll be back when we're back then. Is that the message? That is the message. Keep an eye out on social media because we will put something out. And uh, like I say, if you like the YouTube channel, you'll get, an, you'll get an alert in your pocket when you're having a shower or whatever you're doing in Tesco's. You'll, you'll find out when we are live. So thank you very much, everybody. Bernsey, um, from over there, where the weather doesn't look great, to be fair, I'm going to go and, and, and probably have some ice cream. Don't show off, Baz. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching.